These are five mistakes that new writers make. So let's get into it. Number five, trying to be somebody else. Now, it's not your fault that you try to be somebody else when you write. Um, this is common. You know, I was a victim of it. I was a victim of everything on my list. Um, basically, how this happens is that you have your favorite writer and you can't help yourself but to read their books, right? So you're reading their books and you're writing your own book at the same time. Well, chances are, if, you, if they're your favorite writer, it's, all your, it's also your favorite genre and um, you're using some of their techniques. Well, what you don't realize is that even though you're using some of their techniques, you're also using their just their overall style of writing, which isn't good for for the individual writers. You know what I'm saying? Like, not everybody can write with the same style. So, for example, I'm a big Stephen King fan, and at first, when I first started writing, I was really into horror, and I wanted to write horror, and I still like writing horror. Um, it's it's something that I like to do, but I, I'm better at horror in the short form. And I'm better at science fiction in the long form. So now I write science fiction novels and write short story horror. Um, but when I first started, I was Stephen King, like I was Stephen King Jr. <laughs> writing, writing my my horror stuff. I was trying to be just like him in all the horror stuff that I wrote. Like I wanted to have the 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 brutality, the the same gore the same everything like stephen king i would like the details and all that stuff but after a while i realized you know that's not my style i can't i can't write like stephen king as much as i love his work i can't write like him so i shouldn't try to be like him and the thing was i wasn't doing it on purpose it was just because i was right i was reading his stuff while i was writing so it just kind of stuck with me um and it was it wasn't until after i read it back to myself that i realized this is too close to Stephen King. I need to back up. So if that's happening with you, take a step back and try to find your own voice in your work. Number four is something that I did big time in my first book, um, even though my first book was fantasy. And I, it's weird, it's fantasy. Um, it started out as horror and I switched it up to fantasy. But anyway, <laughs> it was too much dialogue in it. Dialogue was just terrible. Like don't, don't put all that dialogue in your work. Um, there's a limit. There's a limit to it where where you can feel like there's too much talking. And basically, um, what you need to do is you need to take all the dialogue that you write and you think to yourself, can I say this piece of dialogue without having a character say it? So can you have, instead of having the snarky lady say, yeah whatever could you have the snarky lady roll her eyes instead that's you know that's dialogue that that you can take out and still keep the same attitude and the same it still works the same keeps the story flowing the same way um and that was a big problem that i had i actually recently just got over that like a, a year ago actually because i wrote uh in the last three years i've written two three almost four books for almost almost four books and then i have like two other ones that i've started so it's it's been crazy it's been crazy last three years but uh two of those books had way too much dialogue um and one of them was my first one which was a novella and it was just full of dialogue it set up the next it set up the sequel to it pretty good um but there was just so much dialogue that it kind of gets boring after a while. It's too much talking, especially in a fantasy book where, you know, you need more action, especially when they're fighting and, you know, there's supposed to be a war going on and, and you're too busy talking. It's like ruining the story. So watch how much dialogue you use. Cut it back. If you can say it with action, say it with action because it makes all the difference in the world. Um, also with dialogue, just a side note, Try to use as few um, dialogue tags as possible. He said, she said, he explained, she explained. Uh, you can use whatever dialogue tag you want. I don't care what anybody says. You can, he explained, he smacked, he snapped, he whatever. You can do all those. But 
just try to use as few as possible. Don't overdo it because people know who's talking. You don't need to say he said, he sh she said. You don't need to do all that every time. So just a side note. Uh, this one's a sticky one. Tricky one. Sticky, tricky? Tricky, sticky. All right. Number three is too many characters. It's possible to have too many characters in your book. Um, I don't really have much to say about this, but just watch how many characters you use because as a beginning writer, you don't want to have too many characters in your story because it's going to be hard for you to keep up with the details of each character unless you outline them and have them just outlined everywhere, which I know a lot of writers don't do, which is another mistake actually that new writers make. I made it. You need to have an outline when you first start and then eventually you'll get to a point where you can just write without the outline. But anyway, don't worry about that. I, I got another video about that actually. Um, too many characters can just get confusing for new writers because you're not used to writing a longer story already and then you're putting in like 20 main characters when your story is uh, 70,000 words and you have readers looking like, but I thought Jim was the one that went to the store. I didn't know Bob was the one who loves shopping. You know, like it would get confusing after a while because there's too many characters and it would confuse you and it would confuse your readers if and and it's just sometimes it's just better to have as few characters as possible so you can keep your story complex within a few characters and keep your characters relevant because it's very hard to keep characters relevant when you have a lot of them and new writers usually struggle with keeping characters relevant so you should probably just focus on keeping your characters relevant and keep your main characters who you want all to focus on to be relevant you can add new characters later yeah of course you can but just when you're starting, just try to go with relevancy, you know, for your main characters. Keep your story interesting for them. Number four is editing too early. Um, <laughs> plenty of people, plenty of people uh, write their story and edit at the same time. I hear cars outside the window. I'm sorry if you hear them. Um, plenty of people write their story and edit at the same time, and it makes the story take forever to be written. And it's really just a headache to to write a story and edit at the same time because you would write a chapter and go back and edit that chapter whereas you could finish the book you can finish the entire book you can go back and you can edit the whole book and if you edit the whole book as just editing and not writing and editing then you can focus on the story that you want to write because you've already written your draft so now you're going back to edit and when you edit your edit is going to be one smooth edit instead of it being right edit right edit right edit because your your story is just going to be broken it, it just it really doesn't work like that and that's why a lot of times people don't even edit their own stuff they just have editors do it and that's why editors exist you know if you have the money pay an editor to help you out um just just do it because that's what they're there for and they're good at it you know what i mean so Try not to edit too early. Just wait until you just write your first draft and then edit when you're done. Or pay an editor to do it for you. Or even have somebody that you know proofread it. And then let them make some marks. And then you go in and you edit after they make the marks. All right, this last one, I had this happen once. And I beat myself up about it. But at the same time, I actually still have the story on my flash drive. Um, and I'm going to finish it. But it's giving up um, because you run into a writer's block and you just can't recover from that writer's block. For Sometimes it takes weeks and months. My writer's block on the story that I stopped on, it has been over a year since I tried to write any of that story. And while I do, um, while I do like the story, I like where the story was headed, I just ran into a place where I was like, I don't know what to write next. I don't know what detail to add next. I don't know what to do with the next part of the story. Or um, I know how the characters are developing. I know what's going to happen with the characters, but I don't know how to take the story. I don't know what happens in between uh, where the characters are and where the characters will end up. So I ran into a block and I just stopped and I started writing on all the other stuff I was working on and I regret it big time. So please don't do that. Don't give up on your story. It's your baby. You need to work on that. You need to raise it, grow it yourself, and put it out. It's your responsibility to get that done. Um, don't give up. 
put all your all into it, go for it, go right. If you like this video, like, subscribe, comment, share it with all your friends and all your partners.